So hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Amesy's Corner. How are you all doing out there? So we got something a little different in store today. Today we're gonna to have a little bit of an adventure here. This is what is known as the Martin Burns Wildlife Management Area. And this would be a place that I grew up, uh, you know, beating old cars and riding dirt bikes and four wheelers. They've kind of put the kibosh on that nowadays. You can't really ride out here anymore. Um, so we're gonna kind of do something a little different. We're gonna have some scale four x four action. So I picked up what is called a Vatera Ascender Chassis K5 Blazer, uh, based on an 86 K5. Really cool little truck. It has solid axles, just like the real truck would have. It has what would be 44 inch Intico Super Swamper tires on it. Actually licensed tread pattern and everything. It was just like a, the real deal. Uh, single speed transmission. Real cool multi-link suspension setup. So I've used this thing a little bit and I'm just blown away by its scale performance. It's not really fast, but that's not uh, not what it's about. So uh, yeah, we're gonna power this thing up. I got some three cell batteries. I got some two cell batteries. I got hopefully enough batteries to make this trip. This is kind of gonna be a, a long crawl here today. We're gonna go taking off up the trail. But first let's get a, I brought, decided to bring the drone. Why don't we just get a little overhead shot? And uh, I haven't really used this enough. I need a little bit of practice. So let's get the drone up in the air. I'll get the truck hooked up and uh, yeah, let's go find some trails to conquer. Uh, got a little story about the first Volkswagen Beetle I ever owned. I had out here, and uh, got a fun little story. Hopefully, we can get to where uh, where the action happened with that car. The Ascender is doing great. This thing's just a blast. It's made it the whole way and taking a bunch of off-trip excursions. Just uh, just been a blast having fun with this thing. But anyways, yeah, this right here is the uh, the other part of the Boston and Maine Railroad. This way right here would be to Newburyport and all that, and then this way right here would be back to the to Byfield where uh, where we you know go and have most of our uh, fun out in the woods. You can actually see that's Interstate 95 if you can see any cars flashing by. But anyways, I wanted to stop right here in this particular spot because uh, this is where one of the craziest things I've ever done driving a car happened. We were, uh, oh, how was I? I was like 14 years old, and on one of the houses that abut this land was an old Volkswagen Beetle that was in somebody's yard just rusting away. Been there at least 20, 15, 20 years. Looked a lot like the 96 did when we went and found that. But I, you know, 14 years old, I went and knocked on the door down this dead end street, knocked on the door and asked the people, hey, uh, can you mind if I take that car out of here for you? And they were like, yeah, hey, whatever, take it out of here. You want it, you can get it out of here, you can have it. You know, I mean, that's not something that happens nowadays. Who's gonna give a 14 year old kid a car that's sitting in the yard? But yeah, I got it running in the yard, took about a day, got it running and took it out here and thrashed it till it didn't move anymore. But anyways, we were, we were coming down here, it was a buddy of mine, his name was Jesse. We were coming this way, the way the, 
the blazer is pointing um, and I had the thing right to the boards on this straightaway I had the thing just as fast as I could get it going speedometer said we were doing 55 miles an hour oh count one two telephone poles right about there was when I looked at the speedo we were doing 55 miles an hour right there we get to this telephone pole right here and I just feel the car shake and, and lurch now I know the camera doesn't really show it but there's a pretty good banking on either side here probably 10 feet on this side and 12 feet maybe a little more on this side and I, I feel the car just drop the rear and just start fishtailing and sliding all over the place I had this death grip on the wheel trying to keep it on the tracks if you'll notice I don't know if it shows there's a bit of a corner right here I had to take um, I don't know 25 30 degree corner or so and right here the car just fishtails right here my buddy in the passenger seat I look over at him, I look to the right at him, he's just white as a ghost. Oh crap, oh shoot, we're gonna die. I look back to, at, the, at the road, you know, look back this way to kind of keep the car kind of going the right way. And then I get it kind of straightened, I look back over at him, and he's laughing his ass off, looking out the driver's window, pointing out my window. I'm like, what the hell's he laughing at? I look over, and there's the left rear wheel, bounding right by the Volkswagen Beetle, hit right here and shot way off into those woods. Now the beavers have done some damage since then. This was all just thick woods. And uh, the car stopped right between these two telephone poles, maybe just a little beyond them. Big giant rut in the ground where the axle was just dragging in the ground right here. And uh, you know, we stopped, we're laughing our ass off because you know, we didn't end up down there, way down this, uh, way down this bank and into that cabbage down there that wouldn't have been fun but uh yeah we stop we're laughing our asses off i get out and i'm trying to find the tire and uh we never found it <laughs> that volkswagen beetle wheel probably somewhere yeah <laughs> i mean we were doing 55 when it went off and a, a tire going 55 miles an hour casualties a lot of kinetic energy but uh yeah we never found that wheel i ended up just uh opening the trunk and the spare was in there we we chucked the spare back on Probably should have tightened up the rest of the wheels, but we didn't. Put the spare on and continued down the tracks. But uh, yeah, that was just a fun-ass time when I was young. 14 years old, able to get a car out, get it running. I mean, I don't think that's something that's going to happen nowadays with all the, you know, the you can't have fun people out there. No one's going to give a 14-year-old kid a car to beat in the woods, at least not around in this area. I want to apologize if there's any wind noise. A little breezy today, but it is what it is. So anyways, yeah, the little, uh, the Ascender here chassis this thing let me take a quick peek at it now honestly there have been more times out here using this thing where I've been jealous of it than I had to help it I actually on this trip here I haven't had to to help this thing out at all uh, this is actually my speaker I, I turn it on for you but uh, I don't want any copyright strikes I, I figure this thing has to do something it holds this uh, you know, all tech Lansing pretty decent beat speaker here uh, I take it off if I'm doing any kind of hard crawling but it actually kind of balances the truck out nice uh, I run um, for those of you who are interested in this kind of thing I run this with uh, two 2200 three cell batteries wired in series with um, with these Anderson power pole connectors you can wire in series like this uh, any of you guys looking for different battery options uh, I just love these things you, you can just run as many batteries you can charge as many batteries in series as long as they're all the same the same cell count these are 11.1 uh, volts each and wired in parallel they're 2200 milliamp hours that's kind of the how big the fuel tank is is 2200 so that's 4200 milliamp hours at 11.13 cell and uh, what are we three and a half four miles out and I've kind of made this thing go off the trail a lot more than than you know probably wanted to but uh, I'm still on the same two packs I actually bought these brand new yesterday I brought a whole lot of batteries out with me but I'm kind of blown away with this setup so anyways yeah this thing pretty decent motor 540 type motor really awesome suspension on it hope I can show enough of this but uh really capable little thing it's got a uh, both front and rear differentials are locked which is key you know it, it doesn't turn real well on the tar like any all-wheel you know, four-wheel drive does but uh, out here in the woods it's just a, it's just a tank it's not very fast only does about you know 12 miles an hour little little faster than a brisk walking pace but 
perfect if you're just going out on a hike with, with the old lady and you you want a little diversion to play with but uh yeah the scale rc stuff so anyways we got about uh another three miles to get out of here i'm gonna go down this trail here go through the uh a little bit of a crossing but great area out here if you're ever going to go hiking this is uh orchard street byfield it's the uh martin burns wildlife management area uh you're not going to do any kind of motor vehicle stuff there's too many people that come hiking out here like we we've, we've uh, seen a few people out here already it's really well gated back when i was young it wasn't really you know used as much it was just an area that was out here people kind of hunted out here and that was it but since the earthy earth or crunchy movement there's been a lot more activity and, and rightfully so with the views and everything out here but anyways guys we got a lot more trail to cover and uh Up and until next time, keep it out of the cabbage.